Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'll be your host today as we talk about and discuss clean and clear energy and how to clear energy safely and easily. And uh, it's just really phenomenal to me how this happens because I came up with this idea about this. I mean, I, people ask me all the time, how can I clear this energy? How can I move this and move that? And usually it's about a specific situation or something like that. And just this morning, of course, which is how things happen in my life. So synchronistic and so divinely planned. Um, there was an incident with my daughter and that happens right with our loved ones or whatever it was nothing big nothing major thank you source for teaching me with ease and grace um <clears throat> in a gentle way and i could have held on to that energy from the exchange that we had and as i was driving away after dropping her off at school i was feeling like wow, you know, how do I move this? How do I shift this? And it just was like, ding, ding, ding in my head. Oh, <laughs> this is exactly what the show's about. How do I move this energy? Um, how do you shift things and be able to move on to the next step without carrying that with you? And sometimes it takes longer, obviously, and sometimes um, you can shift it quickly. So I want to talk, first of all, about the different ways that energy shows up in our life. And I'd like to do it based on a way, it's a Hawaiian way of teaching that I'm taking a class right now with, um, through Eala Ea, with Kale Nohea uh, Kleikon. And uh, I would look her up if I were you, Eala Ea and she's on Instagram, and she teaches a wonderful uh, course in Hawaiian chanting. She's been chanting for over 30 years, and she's a master at this healing art, basically. And the way she's teaching it, and a lot of the Hawaiian ways of teaching are to, or maybe it's a new Hawaiian way, is to first of all see how it relates to yourself, and then see how it relates with others, with your community around you, see how it relates to the land, and how it relates to your higher power, your spirit, your God, your Akua, um, and so to speak. So that's how I'm going to approach this energy subject, and where these energies that are stuck might show up, and how they might be created. Um, so first of all, let's start with ourselves. So, and I'll speak for myself because that's really all I can do. <laughs> so some ways that that can show up is like it did this morning, you know, with, um, I felt unheard. I felt frustrated. I felt angry. I was actually a little bit angry. I felt disappointment. Um, there was an overwhelming feeling of emotions and that was the energy that was present in my field for a certain amount of time this morning. And um, that's one way. Another way could be uh, maybe a broken heart. Somebody who you care about, you lost. Um, maybe they passed away, or maybe it's a divorce or a relationship that is come to a completion that is no longer the way it is, the way that it had been before. Um, and that can be, you know, a form of grief. So that's another way that we have energies that can get stuck and what happens is it shows up in your life, right? Shows up physically, it shows up mentally, it shows up emotionally, even spiritually, it can affect you that way. So what are those ways that it can show up? Um, physically, maybe you could get a headache. 
Maybe you could like constantly be getting headaches. Maybe suddenly you feel it in your low back or suddenly you feel like, oh man, I just, I'm so tight, you know, and your muscles start getting tight around your neck and, and maybe your chest or something like that. Or maybe you could form an ulcer. I mean, these are all ways that energies that aren't released and cleared and cleaned out can find their way into your body physically because they're not being let go of. They're not being loved and processed. Uh, so many times it feels like we push them down or we pretend we're okay, basically lying to ourselves, saying that we're fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay to have a broken heart. It sucks. <laughs> it's not okay to not be able to communicate with your loved ones. It doesn't feel good. And it's a part of life, right? So how do we move through these energies in order to be able to get to the other side so that we can feel free and happy and clean and clear in our energy so that we can greet the next experience that life has to offer us with joy and happiness and an open heart and ways of being able to just fully experience rather than only parts of us being able to experience um, the new things that may come up in our lives. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next way would be others, like in our community. Um, community could have stuck energy through gossip. I mean, look at all of the damaging things that can happen through gossip. And you just take teenagers, for instance. You know, if there's gossip and that gossip is spread around and seen as truth, there's an energy that follows that. And it could take months, it could take years for that energy to actually lift to where other people don't see that energy with you when they see you. So that's one way that um, some energies could happen in a community um, realm. Uh, also, the news. Hey, had a little bit of that lately, haven't we? Uh, seems like at any time in our lives and these days with so much availability to what's happening in all parts of the world, we have access to all of the news, right? And some of it's true, some of it's not true, some of it's based to bring this energy of fear. I'm going to call that an energy. Um, sometimes it's used to bring an energy of um, lightness. And a lot of times it's really, really hard to lift that kind of an energy because it's a group. So wherever one or more are gathered, you've got that synergy, right? There's a bigger feeling around it. That's why prayer is so powerful. And if you can have many people praying, then it's even more powerful. And um, the same thing can happen in the other direction, right? So that's another way. Um, maybe even in an argument that you might have that spreads throughout uh, the community of friends that you have or your family. Oh my gosh, how often does that happen? Something blows up, feelings are hurt, and then there's this energy and people don't talk about it. They don't ho'oponopono. They don't forgive themselves for it. They don't forgive each other, which really ultimately forgiveness, right? Starts with ourselves. And 
everybody has a part in everything that is available to your experience. And so really taking a look and a feel into that, no matter whether you're right or you're wrong or they're right or they're wrong or what actually happened, usually the details don't really matter as much as the energy and the feelings inside of you. So finding a way to um, recognize that is really the key to being able to release it. So, okay, that's community. So that's others, right? Uh, land, our earth our planet. How do we find stuck energies on our planet? And how are they created? Um, they're created by war. You can find, you can feel it. You can feel where there's been that kind of fighting. You can go to a country, I mean, we're here in Hawaii, there was plenty of war fought here in Hawaii. Uh, go to the top of the Pali, there you get chicken skin, go to some hikes, and you can just feel it. You can feel that there is maybe not even war energy or death energy, but you can feel feel the heiaus that were used and you're like well okay something bigger is here and you don't know what it is maybe it just shows up as chicken skin maybe it just shows up as the hair standing up on the top of your head maybe it just shows up as maybe you know the back of your tongue inside of your mouth by your jaw starts watering maybe you feel like you just have to start walking with purpose and move yourself from that place. Or maybe you feel like you need to just sit down on the ground, kneel, put your forehead on the ground and connect, you know, to that energy. So these are ways that uh, the land holds and it has energy in it. and. Um, and that's harder to be able to lift. And actually, I have something to say about that also. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, as far as our earth having a lot of energies to be able to release. And then we'll move on to spirit, right? So our relationship with spirit, how are ways that energy can find its way there? Um well, there's always the subject of ghosts, quote unquote ghosts, tis the season right now, actually. And um, that's basically human spirits who have moved on and maybe they're having a hard time crossing over and maybe they're having a hard time um, finding their way. And sometimes that shows up as what people would refer to as ghosts. Um, really, it's basically stuck energy. Um, some people feel they believe in other lives and they maybe had something happen in another life or a life that is happening at the same time as this life. I mean, there's so many feelings out there as to... <laughs> our spiritual uh, awareness and beliefs. And that has definitely come up in many of the shamanic um, practices that I've learned. And then there's another is the, um, even if we just take it to our lineage, to our ancestral lineage, think about all the trauma that has happened in that lineage and how that can be brought forward in the DNA of each person. I mean, it's just fascinating to think that I was born with my mom's DNA and I am my dad's DNA. So I've got all of that inside of me, right? 
And in fact, I had an amazing experience with that. I was releasing, oh my gosh. So I recognized this pattern that I've had in my life and I recognized it. And then I was able to release it. And then I was able to reset. And it was just revolutionary. And my mom called and I said, oh my gosh, look, I've been teaching people to treat me this way because I had this energy of, and it was, it was around value of worth. And I said, and I've, I've had this sticking with me for, for my whole, for my whole life that I can even remember. And she goes, oh my gosh. And she started telling me her experience for that morning. And it clicked in my head. I was like, oh, we're doing the same thing. So how many ancestral cycles, how many times through our lineage have the women in our lineage and the men for that matter, been denying their value of their worth? And how do you stop that? That's another big one. So that's the spirit side of it. Um, okay, so we've covered all some different examples, my personal <laughs> examples, super vulnerable. Um, <clears throat> and now let's get on to the, you know, the nitty grit ways to be able to release those things. So as we do here on this show, we talk about the physical, the mental, the spiritual, and the emotional. So body, mind, emotion, and spirit. Um, we'll start with the physical because that is, and some of these apply to all of the parts of our holistic selves. And some of these apply maybe more to one than another. Um, so physically, what can you do to change this stuff? Like today I laughed <laughs> afterwards, after I dropped off my daughter, I just was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I just started laughing at myself because here I'm being brought this perfect example that happens to everybody every all the time it's, it's happening to somebody every single day where these kinds of exchanges are happening and you don't know what to do so what's something else if you're not maybe you're not in a position to really be able to laugh about it maybe you're really pissed off about it and it's something that's making you super angry and you just can't get out of that energy then what do you maybe you clap like, whoa, that just changed the energy in this whole room. Um, you could clap, you could dance, dancing movement, twirling around the twirling dervishes. I think I said that right. <laughs> the twirling dervishes. Um, that's what they do. They spin and spin and spin and spin and spin. Some, I've heard they spin for hours and that's changing the energy and they actually move into a different state of consciousness through doing that and um that's moving the energy oh my gosh breath actually before i left this morning that's what i did i took this huge sigh and i just <laughs> breathed it out and breath applies to every part of moving energy it applies to every part of our existence and our holistic selves so breath 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 breathe 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 and breathe some more um what are some other ways let's see you can sing you can tone you can chant chanting is an amazing way to access movement of energy um let's see you can get wet use the water you can go for a swim you can take a shower um salt is a huge way of cleansing energy and helping you to clear it um my Hanai uncle, Dave Lyman, he's done so many blessings. He actually married 
um, my husband and I, and I am just so grateful for him. And he would always use salt and he would throw that salt and he would throw it not just with purpose, but with an a huge amount of energy. And the way he explained it to me was that that's showing the energy of the space that you're speaking to and affecting that you mean it. You really mean it. So you are doing it with purpose and a cool, you like take that, that salt and you throw it against the wall. You throw it against the hull of that boat. You throw it you throw it on yourself. Scrub yourself with salt. Salt's an amazing tool for shifting and clearing energy um, physically. Uh, let's see what, uh, oh, crystals. I have a crystal. I just looked down and saw it. Yes, that jogged my memory. This crystal is amazing. This is uh, not just this crystal, but citrine to be specific. Citrine is a self cleanser. So it not only cleans the energy around in the environment, it can clean the energy of you personally, but you can also, it cleans itself. So this if you're just getting started with crystals or with clearing energy on your own, I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting a nice piece of citrine. And it's a very powerful. Um, other crystals that you use, you might, you can cleanse the energy. You have to cleanse the energy out of those crystals. And that's, you know, maybe a different talk. Put them in the sun and the full moon. Light, that brings me to the next amazing clearing and cleansing light can clear things um so much energy um what else sound all kinds of sound you can scream you can scream underwater you can i mean i don't know you could scream in your house you could scream on a hike you could scream um into a pillow uh those are all things that you can do and physical is e the easiest way. Oh, spray. You can spray a room. This is from um, an amazing friend and teacher of mine with Pohala Botanicals. Um, room sprays are amazing. Essential oils. Um, Kaoni Hanale creates these amazing blends. Uh, let's see what else. Smudging. Smudging is big smudging the native americans and many cultures actually have different forms of smudging and it's that white smoke that they feel is what's actually cleaning the energy like of your orc field um, so it's both physical and spiritual right because it's talking about your energy field that's around you um and so smudging is a big any kind of smoke and different smudge. So you can have different, I have some right here. So you have different smudge bundles. I made these. So this has lavender and sage, which is a big cleanser, it has rose, it has um, juniper. You could use cedar. Cedar wood is an amazing cleanser and also brings protection as well. So um, those are ways you can rattle there's all kinds of ways to be able to physically move energy and drink water. Oh my gosh. Basic. So basic. Drink water. Breathe. Like, let's just go to, oh, I don't have any of those things. I can't clear this energy. Breathe. Cleansing breaths. <sighs> so powerful. So potent. So effective. Drink water. Super powerful. And what do you do when you drink water? You pee, right? You have to urinate. You have to shishi. So then, boom, what's that doing? That's cleaning you out. It's clearing you out. So, um, yeah, this isn't brain surgery. It's not rocket science either. <laughs> so our minds, we can get stuck with energy in our mind. Again, breathe. Chanting is another one. Tapping. You can tap. There's a whole 
science and practice around tapping and how it can get your mind and your brain out of the energies that it's getting stuck in emotional ways oh crying crying laughing um journaling those are ways that you could shift energy doing a brain dump like just right whatever is in your brain don't worry about sentences don't worry about anything making sense just write for three pages um julia cameron she wrote an amazing book about the artist way and that's one of the tools that she uses for artists to be able to get rid of the energy that might be blocking people from writing or from creating their art that uh, they're used to being, that they're being called by their spirit to create, which is another thing, you, you know, we're moving on to our spirit. So meditation, you could do some, some shamanic practices. Those are ways to be able to help. You can um, find someone who does that kind of healing work. You could use a drum and use the drum to find your way into those parts that you don't, the parts of yourself that you don't normally access, like your theta um, brain waves, where you're able to access the things that aren't right here in your linear space. Um, so yeah, those are all of so many different ways to be able to move energies and clean and clear energies. Now I do want to talk about, and I feel really strongly about this. Um, and it's going to bring me to one of the biggest ways to be able to clear energy. And a lot of people will, um, for the lack of a better word, they will dump their energy into the earth. And I'm here to tell you right now, the earth is not equipped, nor is it her job to clean up the mess of your energy, my energy, a community's energy, um, anyone's energy. That's not the earth's job. The earth's job is to help gift us that energy of the love that it provides, that grounding centeredness to help us become and be earthbound in a way that blends and mixes and dances with that heavenly part and energy that comes in from, from the heavens so that we can find this dance and this melding um, in our human experience or the way we show up here on this planet so how do what do you do with your energy then you ask <laughs> even though i can't hear you asking uh well what do you do with the energy if you don't put it into the earth and if you do have a practice of putting it into the earth i ask you to please be very very specific and i say this with determination and um Please be specific with your energy and ask for that energy. If you do choose to use the earth, send it directly to the crystal iron core. Send it to the center of the earth. Okay? If you do, it's not ideal. Okay, I'm going to put it that way. Um, the only way, really, to clean and clear any of these energies that I've talked about for the last half hour is love. Paused on purpose. Love. Love is what it all comes down to. The only way to heal and release any energies that are stuck physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, in ourselves, in each other, in our communities, in our land, in our spiritual selves, is love. Love is what we're made of. 
It's what we're born of. It's what we came from. And it's what we will return to. And love is really the only way that you can effectively, truly release and clean and clear the energies that you feel are stuck. And that takes practice. And we have all these amazing tools to be able to help us. We've got our bodies. We've got our crystals. We have um, drums. We have rattles. We have water. We have each other. So I'm going to leave you with that. Everything comes back to love, people, and breath. <laughs> love and breath. So, um, thank you so much for listening and sticking it through for all of this discussion on energies and how to clean and clear it. And I really hope that some or any or all of this has been able to resonate with you and be able to help you on your journey of becoming the cleanest, clearest, most joyful, happy, loving human that you can possibly be. <laughs> As always, I would like to thank Think Tech Hawaii for continuing to provide such an amazing platform for us to be able to have these conversations and to be able to discuss these topics and to all the donors and the supporters of Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, all you viewers, for continuing to support us. And on that note, um, I leave you with love and light. Mahalo. Mm -hmm.